Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I'm going to take something I made in a previous coding challenge, a Flappy Bird clone, and add two features to it. One is something I've just been wanting to do because I did a sort of really poor job of, of, of developing an algorithm to pick the pipe locations, and so I want to improve that algorithm. We'll talk about that in a second. The other thing that I want to do is instead of, I want to change the interaction. Instead of pressing the mouse, I want to be able to clap. And when I clap, I want to be able to uh, control the little flappy bird by clapping. So let me first talk about the pipe thing. So the way that I picked, when I did this coding challenge first time, what I did is I thought of the center of the window, and then I picked, a, I made a pipes randomly from zero to the middle with some random height, and then one from the bottom from zero, some random height from, from the bottom to the middle. In that sense, it is impossible for me to have ever picked this as a set of pipes because the pipe can never go below the middle with the random algorithm that I'm using. I think what would be better is to pick a random distance, right? What is the distance between that is going to be the empty space that you have to fly through? And then I could also pick a random maybe center point for that distance, or I could just kind of pick a random height. I don't know, I have to figure that out. <laughs> but, well, I'll figure that out as we do it. But that would certainly, that's the sort of core building block, like how much space do you have? And then following that, where is that space? So let's try to add this improvement. Um, and I'm watching the chat to see if anybody has any better suggestions. Here I am back. So let's look at this code. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. Um, uh, pipe. So notice how top is random height divided by two, bottom is random height divided by two. So this is fine. That can still ultimately be the two values that matter, right? What is this value top and what is this value bottom? It's just more how do I arrive at those points? So let's do it. Let's look at where I create the, oh, I, this is where I create it. So let me instead say var spacing equals random. Now, so what's a good amount of spacing? Like if it's really easy, like the lowest amount you should have is maybe 20 pixels, let's just say, and the most you should have is like half the actual window. So this is the amount of spacing. And I could say now, just to like see if this works, I could say it is height divided by top is height divided by two minus spacing divided by two, and bottom is height divided by two plus spacing divided by two. So let's just see if that works, so to speak. So I'm picking an amount, ooh, this is not working. <laughs> what did I get wrong here? Oh, 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 oh. I forgot. This is not the location of the bar, like which would be the height plus the spacing. It's the, um, it's the uh, actual length of it, so that is also should be minus spacing. There we go. <laughs> and this can be, divided by two, divided by two, uh, and so now you can see, and I can uh, put these back. So now we're picking that random spacing, and but that amount of spacing is always around the center. So what I want now to be possible is that, um, that, that you know, kind of like where the center of it is also uh, random. So on the one hand, I could, so I could say like var center y is any random point between zero and height, and in which case I'm saying the top is center y minus spacing divided by two, and the bottom is center y minus spacing by two, but that's not gonna work. So I'm picking now an amount of space. Now I wanna pick where that amount of space is. So let's say I pick uh, 30 pixels, and then I pick, it should be centered around you know, pixel 40. So what I want is to go from pixel 40, 15 pixels up, and my first rectangle has a height of what? It has a height of 40 minus, you know, 30 divided by two, right? And then the bottom rectangle has what? It has a height of the, um, the difference between 40 Right, 40 plus um, the, the, the actual, sorry, height of the whole window minus the center 
plus whatever that spacing is. So if we, <laughs> I'm sort of figuring that out, if I come back here, I should be saying something like the uh, height is height minus center minus plus spacing divided by two, right? So how does that, that should give me now the, the height of the top is from zero to wherever that center is minus the spacing, and then the bottom starts at the bottom going all the way up wherever that center is, but then shifting by that spacing. So now what I'm gonna do is actually make the spacing always 20 pixels and just have a random height, and we should see this work. So we should see now that the amount of space should always be 20 pixels. Now it didn't work when the center point was actually picked too high. So I don't know if I can force that to happen again, but let's say I pick the center point at 15 pixels. We have to fix this. If I pick the center point at 15 pixels, actually it is working. So what if I pick the center point at five pixels? Yeah, you can see, or one pixel. Now it's sort of broken. So one thing I have to do is I have to limit where I pick that center point based on how much spacing there is. So maybe the center should be picked between spacing and height minus spacing. So now we should see, I should, you know, uh, you know, I could add a lot more pipes. Like where am I, how often am I adding the pipes just to sort of test? Um, I add pipes if one goes off the screen and then the pipe moves at a certain speed. I guess that's what's controlling it. So let me just make the pipes move faster. Oh, that doesn't help. Maybe if they move slower, whatever. <laughs> I have to adjust how I'm doing that too. Ah, I, you know, I, could, I should add pipes in a different way. I could just add them every so often. But, um, so, but now I should be able to add a random spacing. I, I'm pretty confident that it's working. And we could, we could make the game kind of hard. Whoops. And I'm gonna have a random amount of space. Okay, so now we've improved this game by changing the way the pipes are built. And they look, design-wise, they don't look very good. Um, so uh, it might make sense for me, by the way, just somebody in the chat had asked for me to make them a little wider. Why not, right? Okay, so now we can see they're a little bit wider. And this is much too hard for me to play, but obviously this is stuff that I can uh, do, make various design decisions about uh, by just changing, oh, I'll make the, spacing a little bit easier. So let's make the game a little bit easier to play. Let me make sure it's like vaguely playable for me. I, not, I should add a score and some sound effects and all that sort of stuff. But right now, let's, uh, what I really want to do in this video, boy, it took me way too long to get to this, is what I want to do is, um, what I want to do is change the interaction. So I'm reading the chat. I want to change the interaction uh, so that when I clap, um, this little flappy circle jumps. Okay, so what do I need to do? First, I need to make sure that I've got a reference to P5 sound, which I do. Now what I want to do is I want to create, I'm going to create an object called Mike. And I want to say uh, Mike equals new P5.audio in. So I want an audio in object. Now, what I want to do is say var volume equals Mike.getLevel. Now, I think what would be useful is to be able to visually also see what the current level is. So one thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna, at the end of draw here, I'm going to um, draw a little bar. So let me say fill uh, green. Let me draw a rectangle. Let me first um, say uh, Y is map uh, the volume, which goes between zero and one to some value between height, um, and, uh, sorry, val uh, between height and zero, and then I'm gonna draw a rectangle at the uh, edge of the screen, which is like width minus 50, um, at y with a height, of, with a width of 50, and a, and a height of uh, height minus y. So I, I just wanna add something really quickly, and I have a syntax error, line 63. Um, uh, somehow I got an extra bracket in there. Oh, 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 P5. Audio in. I'm importing. I'm not importing sound. So one thing you got to make sure is that I'm using the P5 sound library, which is hopefully there in the library's folder. It is. Okay. So um, Y 
Am I not seeing my nice little rectangle? Uh, let me make sure the volume is working. Ooh, I'm just getting zero. So how come I have the, oh, I didn't say start. Ah, always cannot forget, <laughs> cannot forget mic.start. I've got to start listening. And now I'm listening. Okay, so we can see here, I just wanted to have that there because I want to be able to visually see what happens when I clap. So now what I need to do is make the bird jump when I clap. And there's a lot of console logging going on. So let me look at this. That's fine, have that there. Let me take out the console logging the volume. Um, and, um, whoops. Uh, okay, so, um, and I can, uh, oh, there's some console logging in this pipe that I can take back out now. Okay, so here we go. Ah! Let's make this really work, everybody. So the first step that I might do is first I gotta look. This is all I need. When the key, and I hit the space bar, bird goes up. So on the one hand, I could just say like, hey, if volume is greater than 0 0.2, bird dot up. So let's run that and see what happens. So already it's working. The thing is, First of all, if I talk, uh, already it's working. The thing is it's responding almost a little bit too well. So uh, A, there's a lot of sort of thresholding of uh, what's the appropriate threshold. So I should make a slide. Let's make a slider here to calibrate this. So I'm going to say uh, slider equals create slider uh, between 0. The range is between 0 and 1, starting at 0.2 and with an increment of 0.01. And um, so let's just make sure there's a slider here. Uh, where's the sl create slider? Oh, there it is. So I can use this slider to adjust what will hopefully be a threshold. Then I want to draw that threshold. So I want to take, um, I want to say var threshold equals, what do I want to say here? I want to get the value of the slider. And then uh, I also want another y value. I probably shouldn't. Um, I'm going to say ty for threshold y, which is map that um, threshold between, uh, which goes between 0 and 1 from height to 0. And then what I want to do is I want to uh, say a stroke. Let's make it red. And I want to, I'll say stroke weight just so we can really see it for. Then I want to draw a line at from uh, width minus 50 at that threshold to the width uh, at that threshold. So I want to be able to see, there's a line, right? And I want to be able to see that, that threshold, I want to be able to like move that threshold. Um, so I have a sense of where that threshold is. And let's, uh, in pipe, uh, where I'm drawing the pipe, let's say uh, no stroke. And in bird, where I'm drawing the bird, also uh, let's say uh, no stroke. So that stroke is only for the uh, uh, rectangle and uh, can also say here, uh, no stroke. Okay, so we should see now that I'm able, I want to like calibrate this threshold. So that's one thing that I want to do. So now what I'm saying is when bird, when volume is not greater than 0.2, I'm saying when volume is greater than threshold. So now let's run this again. So now you can see whenever the volume goes above that threshold, it actually, uh, it moves it up. So I can make the threshold higher. So now I have to be much <laughs> louder. <laughs> Those were some loud claps. I hope I haven't hurt anybody's ears. <laughs> so, but here's the thing. I actually, this, even though the th having, controlling this threshold is really useful, this is not exactly what I want to do. To determine if I'm clapping, right, whenever I talk or make a sound, the volume gets louder. A clap, though, is an instantaneous sound. But even as slowly as I might clap, it's actually loud, louder than the threshold for quite a bit of time, several frames of animation. So that up force is applied many, many, many times. What I actually want to do is have a double threshold. I want a threshold for how loud a clap is, but I, don't, I only want to trigger the up 
force once and I don't want to trigger it again until it's become quiet and then loud again. So what I actually need are two thresholds. So I'm going to make slider top and slider at bottom. So I'm going to say slider top and I'm going to make another one, slider bottom. These are both sort of, and I'm going to have the top threshold start at point 3 and the bottom threshold start at point 1. And this is, uh, sorry, this is slider top, threshold top, and I need threshold bottom, 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 slider bottom. So if the volume is greater than the top threshold, bird goes up. And not clapping. So what I want to also do is introduce a new variable, clapping. And clapping starts at false. So I assume I'm not clapping. So I only want to trigger the force if I'm not clapping and the sound has gotten above a certain threshold. So if the volume gets above a certain threshold and I'm not clapping, trigger that force and set clapping equal to true. Now, if the volume ever gets below the bottom threshold, now I can set clapping equal to false. Right? So I can only trigger that force when I'm above the threshold. So let's also, um, let's also uh, this is top Y, and I want to do um, a bottom Y. It, um, this is threshold top, uh, threshold bottom, and let's make this one blue. And uh, bottom Y, bottom Y. So I should see now two thresholds. So the, thresh, the top threshold and the bottom threshold. And I picked some arbitrary numbers. Let's see how they work. <laughs> so I think I need to move the top threshold down a little bit. And let's move the bottom threshold down a little bit too. <laughs> so you can see there's like a lot of calibration involved here. <laughs> but um, but the, the idea is working. And so I'm even going to make the top threshold lower. And now we're going to see how. I'm pretty terrible at this game. I could also just do it with talking, right? So talk, 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 jump. Jump, 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 jump. OK, by the way, I could just use the space bar. So also, you know, the strength of the force is quite important. Various other things are important. So anyway, I, I would love for people to take this code and, you know, A, you know, come up with your own game. Um, think of a slightly different interaction besides clap. Play with the threshold values. Um, and, and sort of see what you could, I'm sure that you can improve on it. Improve on the design of the page, you know, where are these sliders, add labels to the sliders, let the people know what's going on. I would love for you if you've watched this video and you take a look at the code that I'm going to publish with it. If you make a version of this that's an improvement on what I've done, I would love to hear about it. So share it in the comments or share it on Twitter at Schiffman. And I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Clappy Bird.